Good. Actually, I'm one of the two English speakers right now, and um, so uh, I will try to speak slow. And uh, if you feel like you want to have some, if you have some questions, uh, Fernando has offered to translate. So you can also ask your questions in Spanish, and hopefully we'll, we'll get everything into English and back to Spanish again. Okay, so um, welcome to my talk. Um, today I'm talking about uh, detecting peering infrastructure outages in the wild. Actually, this is a work that we did together with uh, TU Berlin. So um, there are a couple of members that are working at DKIX and are also uh, working at TU Berlin, together with uh, Anja Feldmann's chair. Uh, so this, on behalf of my colleagues, I'm standing here that also contributed a lot of this work, Vasileos, Chris, Georgios, Anja, Artur, and Emil. And um, actually, what happened? Cancel? So, um, yeah, as I said, a lot of people contributed to this work, and actually, uh, we also published a paper for this work, which has the same title. It appeared on SICOM this year. So, if you feel like you want some additional information, feel free to look it up on Google and uh, check out the paper. So I would like to start with a couple of uh, definitions and motivating why peering infrastructures are a critical part of the interconnection ecosystem. So starting uh, with the definition of internet exchange points as for example DKIX is one. Um, basically we are a switching fabric for layer two a bilateral and multilateral peering. And, um, if you look at the numbers, the largest RXP support more than 100,000 peerings. And uh, talking for DKIX, we are um, uh, in, during the traffic peak, we have six terabytes per second of traffic. And um, also, typically, there are SLAs in place at, at peering locations, like, uh, for example, 49s, which essentially translates to 52 minutes downtime per year. So you see, it's quite a um, quite hard requirements, a lot of traffic and, uh, and, and hard SLAs. On the other hand, uh, also used for peering, uh, there are carrier neutral co-location facilities. Um, f uh, those are infrastructures that, no idea. Uh, those are infrastructures that are, are used for the physical co-location and selling uh, cross-connect interconnections. And if you look at these, like for example, the big data centers, like Equinix or, or inter Interaction, you have uh, like more than 170K of interconnections and even harsher SLS. So you're here in the, um, in the range of five nights. That means uh, you can have like roughly five minutes downtime per year before you violate your service level agreement. So coming from this motivation of uh, the big amount of traffic and uh, the hard uh, service level agreements, um, outages and peering infrastructures can really severely dis disrupt critical services and applications. Usually you see this in the news, like for example here, um, another ISP hit by second major internet outage, power failure blamed, um, Equinix coolage out cooling outage leads to flight delays in Australia. And uh, these, if, if peering outages fail, they have a real impact on society. So really critical services are going out of service and it can cause problems. So to sum it up, outage detection is crucial to improve the situational awareness, the risk assessment, and the transparency towards your customers, essentially. Because somehow you need to also um, validate that you keep your SLAs. So the question is, how are we handling outages currently? So if you are in the, in the operator's business, you know that there are a lot of mailing lists, like for example, the Danok mailing list for the German operators, SNOC for, for the Spanish operators, I guess, and, and Nanok for the North Atlantic operators. And essentially what is happening is that the AES has tried to crowdsource outage detection by sending a message to this mailing list and asking, hey, we've just had three links drop simultaneously to different equipment in Tillerhouse North in London, for example. Um, 
anyone else seeing anything. So the question is, is this a good approach? So if you look at this, first it involves manual work. There are people involved that need to first detect that something is going wrong, need to write an email. And the second uh, problem that is there is that it's basically locally separated. So you may see a problem in Spain, which is uh, also triggering a problem in, Spain, in Germany, but if it's only monitored on one of the mailing lists, parts of the affected parties will never find out that this problem was even there or where it is located. So basically, whom to call to fix it. So we found out in our work, because we also looked into this mailing list, that it's quite in, uh, inadequate transparency and responsiveness from the in infrastructure operators, actually. So the current practice is likely to not provide a very representative view of the outage situation that we have in the internet routing ecosystem. So coming from this motivation, we had uh, a couple of research goals for this work. Um, the first being outage detection. So we wanted to be able to detect outages timely and at the finest granularity that is actually possible. Finest granularity, okay, that is difficult to define, but um, you, if you're somewhere in, involved in internet measurement, you know that there's only a very limited view on what is really going on. For example, in BGP, you have a couple of looking glasses that you can look at. But the idea here was really to combine all these data sources and try to form a representative view of the outage situation on the internet. The second point was outage localization, because often you have like some cascading effects, a link is failing in, say, France, and someone in Germany is having problems. So um, the idea was to also investigate cascading effects and be able to distinguish cascading effects from the real outage source, so where actually the link has failed or the peering has failed or whatever. The third point here is outage tracking. So we wanted to be able to, if, if we detect an outage, to be able to determine the duration the shifts in routing paths, and also the geographic spread. So what geographic region is actually affected by this outage on the internet? So um, the main challenge uh, that we face, uh, face in this project is that essentially, if you look at um, protocols like BGP, which are your main data sources, facilities are invisible in these protocols. So if you look at this example topology over there, we have uh, like two facilities, facility one and facility two, which is also hosting an IXP. And we have a switch of the path, so AS1 and AS2 are, are appearing in both facilities. And um, essentially both are only layer two fabrics. So if you look at BGP, um, before the change and after the change, you basically have the same AS path and you're not able to distinguish that something has happened in the underlay. So um, the question is actually, okay, you first have to find out that there was a change, which you don't see at the AS path, and if you are able to detect the change, you need to still have to find out which facility has actually failed here in this, in this example. So um, luckily, um, looking at BGP, um, there is an increased use of border gateway protocol communities. Um, I guess you know what BGP communities are. Those are um, like little tags that you can append to your, your BGP routes when, when you announce them. And uh, basically these uh, tags um, have a certain meaning for the facility. Often these BGP communities are, for example, used to tag the incoming port of the traffic. Yeah? So, a no note of the traffic of the announcement. And um, essentially, um, if you are able to monitor um, the community tags, as shown in this example here, you are still able to, um, to detect the change of the routing path because um, simply the, these two facilities here use different tags for, for tagging the incoming port of the, of, of the announcement. So if you look at the overall BGP traffic that you can pull out of looking glasses all around the world, um, you see here that the um, usage of community tags has 
increased by roughly 500% since, since 2010. And that actually means that um, the insights you can receive from these community tags are getting better with every year. So what we did is essentially um, we um, utilized these BGP communities so um, to detect or to map BGP AS paths to certain uh, peering facilities. And that sounds very easy. Uh, and extracting these communities from the BGP paths also is not difficult, but the problem is to match the communities that you extract to the peering facility. Um, you have a lot of data sources, we have peering DB, we have operator websites, but all of this information is unstructured. So we did a lot of efforts there, partially manual work, um, even using like machine learning and natural language processing to extract this information from, from the operator websites, for example, and build a dictionary that maps communities to a certain facility. And uh, if you look at um, this graph here, um, we, um, we checked how many of the paths are annotated with, um, with the community tag that we could map to a, uh, to a facility, to a peering facility. And we found that we can map roughly 50% of the IPv4 routes and roughly 30% of the IPv6 routes, um, which, are, which were annotated with at least one community and uh, could be mapped through our dictionary to a peering facility. Also, our dictionary covers 24% of the f facilities that are registered in PeeringDB. And uh, that is actually not a very good number, but if you look at the peering facilities that have at least 20 members, for example, IXPs with at least 20 members, we cover 98% of them. So at least we can cover the medium to big sized players in the market with our approach. So, in the following, I'd like to introduce our um, outage detection mechanism. So, basically, it consists of um, two phases. So, the first one is a passive phase, and the second one is an active phase. In the passive phase, we monitor BGP data, and if we detect an outage um, or an outage signal, we start investigating the outage with active uh, measurements. So starting here, for example, we have like three vantage points in this, um, in this um, simple setup here. And um, for each vantage point, we collect all the stable BGP routes uh, tagged with the communities of the target facility, for example, here facility two, in order to have sort of a baseline that we compare to in the, in the following. So here, for example, you see that uh, facility two uses uh, these community tags here and detects uh, the routes um, uh, with, with, the, with the respective uh, community tag, and we are recording all this. So from, from this baseline, we track the BGP updates of the stable path for changes in the community values that indicate that the ingress point was changed. So as I said before, the facilities usually use these texts to, to, um, uh, to uh, mark the ingress point. And um, the, the idea now is that if you see a change in this ingress tag, you assume that the route has changed uh, and is now uh, routed over a different peering facility. Actually, what we do not do, as I said before, we don't care about the S-level path changes. Um, if they, uh, as, as long as the ingress tagging communities remain the same. So um, the idea here is to, to be decoupled from AS path changes and only look at the communities in order to detect these changes of facilities. So in this example here, uh, you see that um, uh, facility two has failed, essentially, and um, we, we detect that not because the AS path changes, they don't actually, but we see that a lot of communities fail at the same time or, or change at the same time. And uh, at this point, this is a first indication for an outage of, of uh, the, the, the peering infrastructure. So it's not yet the final inference of what has really happened. So um, 
we define this, uh, this could be a, like something like a partial outage, like some lag is going down, you only have half the traffic that can be transmitted. It could be, for example, a deep peering of large ASs. Simply two ASs have chosen to not peer anymore at this point, and then a lot of routes will change. Or also I, uh, some, some uh, peers could, um, could install a major routing policy change, which could, which could also result in, in this, this type of signal that we see here. So, and, and this is where you have to start to do some, some educated guessing and classification what's actually happened in the network because, of course, you don't have a real ground truth that you can use here. So what we do in the, in, at this point in the measurement is essentially we do a signal investigation. That means if we see something like this, we start active measurements. We're doing trace route measurements, for example, and simply try to infer what is actually going on in the network. And you can derive quite some things uh, uh, from these measurements. For example, you can also look at how disjoint are the affected paths, or how many ASs and links have been uh, affected by this outage, essentially. So, um, yeah, I think we have developed quite a good metric to classify this, but of course, um, there's some, some educated guessing is involved here as well. So. So, in order to, to, to close the, the measurement cycle, um, we are assuming that the outage um, is over when the majority of path returns to the original facility. So, essentially, if you uh, like, uh, see that this, uh, the, the, the missing routes are restored on the same facility again. Also, Again, using the community tags in order to um, track them to the right, uh, map them to the right facility. So that was outage detection, detecting that a problem is there and how to track it. But um, outage localization is something that is much more hard to do. So. Um, the location of the community values that trigger outage signals may not be the outage source. It's simply because we only have limited insights into the network, we only see certain vantage points, and you still don't know what is happening in between these vantage points. So it could be basically everywhere in between. So basically, the communities only encode the ingress point closest to our vantage points. So we term that near end infrastructure. And as I said, the ASs may be interconnected over multiple intermediate infrastructures that we simply don't see because we don't have looking glasses there. And uh, failures uh, of intermediate infrastructure may affect the near end infrastructure paths. So I'm not really going into much detail here because most of this is very tedious, and um, I, I would, if, if you're interested in this, I would recommend that you take a look at the paper that we published, uh, because I think it would be too much for this session. <laughs> so it's just giving an overview, um, so what we actually do is we create high-resolution co-location maps. That means we are mapping ASs to facilities, we are mapping ASs to internet exchange points where we can do it, and we are mapping internet exchange points to facilities where we can do it. So it sounds very simple, but essentially we are aggregating a lot of information from peering DB, data center map, operator websites into a common knowledge base in order to do this. And it also involves a lot of manual work, actually. So actually we have students that are browsing these websites and looking up information for us. And um, this Doing this uh, allows us to decorrelate the behavior of affected ASs based on their infrastructure location. So the problem is that ASs may appear at multiple locations at the same time, and uh, if you only look at the communities without doing these high-resolution co-location maps, you still don't know which facility has actually failed. So here you see one of uh, those examples. There is, um, uh, yeah. Just an example of facility four, uh, I don't know, I think it was uh, some, uh, some uh, provider in London, some peering provider. And um, if we look at this in an aggregated manner, you see here there were two outages from this, uh, from this peering provider. 
uh, but they were in different data centers actually. One was in London Teller City and one was in London Teller House North. And if you look at um, only the aggregated uh, BGP paths that you map to these facilities, then you could not, uh, then you cannot distinguish which of the locations actually has failed. So if you decorrelate them with uh, the uh, high resolution collocation maps, uh, you can see here on the right side um, that we have in the middle the, the lines that are going over the whole graph. Those are the ASs that appeared in both data centers. Whereas in the upper part, you see the um, ASs that only appeared in Taylor House North. And in the lower part, you see the uh, London Taylor City um, ASs that appeared there. But still, it's the same peering provider because peering providers are distributed across data centers. Yeah, actually, this is how we do the decorrelation. And always considering the baseline and the change from that baseline. So um, I talked about the approach, and uh, I would like to um, show you some of the results that we've actually measured. So um, one of the main results here is uh, that we found 159 outages of peering facilities in five years of BGP data. And uh, we found that 76% of the outages are not reported in popular mailing lists and websites. So what you see here is uh, the red line is, uh, are the reported incidents. Actually, the, uh, the peak in 2012, that was Katrina in, in the US, where a lot of infrastructure failed. And uh, in the background, uh, you, see, um, uh, you see our measurements. And um, yeah, you see that um, what we measure and what we see on mailing lists and websites differs quite a bit. Um, so essentially, getting the baseline for these measurements was manual work, like looking up incidents that we found in the data and trying to find them on some mailing list. So that was really done by students that cross-validated the data. So um, we also looked at uh, the effect of outages on uh, service level agreements. Um, what you can see here in this graph are the, the three main service level agreements, three nines, four nines, and five nines. And um, if you look at the data, you see that 70% of the failed facilities are below five nines uptime, 50% of the failed ISPs are below four nines uptime, and 5% of the failed infrastructure are below three nines uptime. Of course, this is not looking into the respective SLA that was exactly in place. It's just to give you a gut feeling how well peering points are actually performing with respect to these benchmarks. Yeah. We also um, looked at measuring the impact of the outages um, uh, on the um, left side here. For you on the, yeah, on the left side, you see that 56% um, of the affected links are in a different country. So you see the incident at one place, but it is caused by a link failure in a different country. And for 20%, we even measure that it's on a different continent. So this is, again, something that um, shows that there should be something like a, a global system for, for um, communicating these incidents, because it's simply very hard to debug a link in France if a link in Australia fails. Moreover, we looked at, um, at some particular incidents, for example, um, the M6 outage, I don't know which year that was, not exactly sure, but um, what you can see here that um, these outages also affect, of course, the quality of service that can be reached. So for this M6 outage here, you saw that um, uh, routes with a round trip time more than 100 milliseconds were 20% before uh, the M6 outage and also 20% after. But during the outage, they had 40% uh, of the routes that um, had a round trip time of more than 100 milliseconds. And this shows that uh, these kind of outages have quite an impact also on, on quality of service and, of course, on end user experience. <laughs> So to conclude my talk, um, I would like to, to stress that we provided a system that uh, can de 
do a timely and accurate detection of infrastructure level outages through passive BGP monitoring and through active measurements um, if we detect a, a, a peering infrastructure failure on BGP. We found that uh, the majority of outages is not widely reported and um, yeah, essentially that doing this type of communication via mailing lists and social media is not a really good approach. Um, we saw, saw also that remote peering and infrastructure interdependencies may cause problems in remote locations that are really hard to track. Um, what I didn't show here, but what is also in the paper is that there are also cascading effects. So sometimes you see links that are failing at some point and they are triggering cascades of route flaps that uh, you see very far away and even amplifies the problem. And we could also show that there is hard evidence um, uh, that uh, you know, what, what I wanted to, to stress here is that hard evidence on outages can improve accountability, transparency, and resilience strategy. So um, it's, I think these type of measurements are very valuable for, for daily operations to debug problems, to be accountable towards your customers, and to provide for the resilient network operations. So that is all from my side. Um, thank you for your attention. And um, please ask questions if you feel like you have some. Eh, ¿Preguntas? Hi, I have a question because you, you commented that you have like uh, very high resolution maps of the, that you are developing. I would like to, to see them. Uh, and uh, I, would, uh, I don't know if you are working in the visualization of data part. But I, I would uh, find out quite interesting because uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of work and research that you mm -hmm. could be doing in that. Yeah. So actually, this was a part of a system that is called Kepler. We call it Kepler after the scientist, and uh, it's uh, responsible for aggregating all these data sources. Um, it's currently running at TU Berlin. I have no insights whether they are planning to open source that somehow. Probably yes, when they are done with all the publications. Um, but um, Anja Feldman, which is uh, doing, uh, which is uh, responsible for much of the work, she, uh, I think, she's very open to these ideas, and I guess there will be some open source publication for that. But I don't think yet. So maybe it might last another half year or something like that. Thanks. Thanks for the presentation. I, uh, I'm curious to understand if the migration uh, from 10 gig to 100 gig in the peering ports have had any effect in the uh, reliability or in this type of failures you're describing. Um, actually, we didn't investigate that because we uh, looked more at uh, like, like the signaling via BGP. So that is the main trigger. Essentially, we don't, we, basically, we only see the incident after it has happened, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we cannot exactly tell it with that approach. But um, might be an interesting topic for, you, for future uh, investigation. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine that, yeah. Preguntas? One, two. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>